Hello and welcome. We're back with our telemedia vodcast. Uh, I hope you've all had a good summer. I certainly have. Jarvis, my esteemed co-host, uh, continues to enjoy his summer break, uh, and that's why he's not here currently. Actually, between you and me, he's in Marbella scoping out the final details for next month's World Telemedia event, uh, which promises to be a belter. So, it's been an interesting summer. Quite a lot has still happened, even though um, I've been on holiday. Uh, the world has continued to turn, and uh, we have a few interesting things that have been in the news uh, across August and in the past few weeks, the first part of September, uh, to talk about. Many of these things are also going to be uh, the core of some of the big sessions uh, and spotlight forums and, and the like at the World Telemedia Show, so we expect to hear more about these um going forward so uh to nick my uh, esteemed colleague jarvis's catchphrase for our podcasts without further ado uh we're going to kick off with a look at messaging now uh it's always been a core part of the telemedia paradigm uh, and it continues to be so um there's some interesting stories that have come out across late august early september uh that, that point to sort of not only how important messaging is to um, the sort of communications world, but how it's sort of morphing in terms of where it sits within that. And in some ways it's becoming both central to um, the whole sort of communications process, but also changing that very process itself, as we shall see. Uh, I'm going to start off with a survey that was uh, done of a thousand UK customers across the summer by a uh, e-commerce marketing platform called Yotpo. Um, we've we've heard uh, from them before and featured some of their stuff in previous podcasts, but they've done a, a, a recent one that, that's found the intriguing thing, which I think is intriguing anyway. That that uh, fifty three percent of baby boomers, so that's people over the age of fifty four, and exactly the same percent 53 percent of generation z that's those youngsters that are 18 to 24 who have beards that aren't as gray as mine uh both these groups in equal numbers find sms to be the most preferred uh, and most useful communication channel between brands and themselves now in some ways that's not a surprise i don't think because everybody uses sms but i think what is surprising is that that despite the sort of panoply of, of messaging technology out there, particularly things to do with social media, sort of direct messaging and OTT stuff, text is still playing like a really key role in amongst the, the younger people, the Gen Zers. Equally, I think for the older people, the, the baby boomers, those over 54, not only have they embraced SMS and, and, and are using it, but they're now using it in that way that everybody else is to, to interact with brands. So, an interesting finding, I think, pointing to the fact that SMS really is the ubiquitous uh, baseline interaction engagement messaging channel. Now, the survey drills into all sorts of things. You can read the story uh, on our website. The link will appear uh, either below while we're doing it or uh, you can uh, suss it out uh, in the uh, blurb below the video. Um, uh, that There are several factors around this. Now, the biggest sort of find here really is that marketeers are also increasingly aware that sms while very popular has to be handled carefully so it's not like just dumped on people you you know because you can broadcast message we all get them it's really annoying there's also a lot of spam and and, and fraudery that goes on around uh, sms messages so the key thing here is that everybody's into it it's really useful as i say baseline messaging uh technology however it needs to still be handled with care and uh, as Yopo points out, there are many ways of doing that. You've got to look at understanding who you're actually talking to. So that age gap might actually be important. What message you send them, how frequently you do that, and all that kind of thing. Uh, and also to, to use it, it where it's appropriate, because it's not as rich as some of the richer things, which we'll come to uh, shortly in some of the other stories we've looked at this month. Um, but it also... Um, is 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 sort of uh, there for the basics and so you have to understand what message you're trying to get across to whom and how to use it so very important messaging channel key to pretty much everything all businesses are pretty much on board with it but they have to be helped with how carefully to do it now this rise in sms isn't the only messaging game in town and a separate study out uh just this week in fact uh from our friends at juniper research um 
finds that uh, business messaging, so the messaging between between applications and businesses and consumers, is growing and continues to grow really rapidly. It's currently, they estimate, worth about $48 billion globally this year, uh, rising to around 78 to 80 billion by 2027. That's a 63% compound annual growth rate uh, across that uh, five-year period, which is quite astounding. Now, while, as they've drilled into it, they found that um, what's going to drive a lot of that growth is going to be our good old friend RCS. So personally, I think a lot of this growth is still going to come from the likes of text. I think it's also going to come from <coughs> excuse me, WhatsApp and other OTT services. But uh, RCS is going to play an important role. <clears throat> And that's increasingly sort of because of the richness that it can deliver, which obviously plays very well into bi to businesses and how they want to message and engage uh, their customers. Now, off the back of what we heard about SMS needing to be well-timed and thought about, this also applies here because it offers a richness, it offers a lot more interaction and the ability to uh deliver carousels of information make it shoppable uh add payments all those brilliant things but again it needs to be deployed sort of uh carefully it needs to be about the right sort of services and i think that's something that's still holding back use of it that and the fact that it very much needs the buy-in of apple which obviously is the thing that sort of uh not the key thing that holds it back. There are more Android phones in the world than Apple ones, but let's face it, it needs to have the buy-in of that significant proportion of particularly good spenders who use iPhones need to be able to use RCS. And we're still not there. The, the Juniper research, um, you know, ably brings this out, that the, the, the key to the, this growth and the key to growth of RCS that driving all of mobile business messaging is going to be Apple's buy-in. Uh, and I suspect that we are going to hear that in the coming 12 months because i think they'd be foolish not to uh they have their own messaging platform but you know really to make all these things work you have to offer every kind of conceivable comms channel to every uh consumer because they don't just use one you know, sometimes they'll use text for they'll, sometimes they'll use whatsapp sometimes they'll use rcs sometimes they'll use imessage it all just depends what they're doing how they're feeling where they are what it is they're trying to achieve uh, and how you've contacted them so the more the merrier. It always used to be the sort of um, ethos amongst uh, sort of gaming companies that the more payment mechanisms you offered, the more likely people were going to be to pay. I think the same applies here with messaging. The more messaging channels you offer, the more people are going to use them and you then enrich those to make each of those more compelling. And so that's uh, the key thing here to the growth of both SMS and RCS. Understand where you're deploying it, who you're deploying it to, and uh, what sort of message you're trying to get across to them. Now, this variety of using messaging tools is having, well, we've seen we've seen the impact it's had on the development of CPaaS, so communications platforms as a service that, that businesses are having to buy into to be able to rapidly deploy this panoply of messaging tools. That's only set to continue. Now, what's interestingly coming along is that this is starting to feed into the, the sort of uh, contact center world. Now, Years and years ago, when I first started writing about telemedia services back in the days of Voice International, for anyone who is as old as me and remembers all those, uh, the glory days in the 90s, a lot of what we wrote about was to do with call centres and contact centres and the technology behind those and the way you, you run those to deliver services. Now, they've morphed into multimedia contact centres. But now, off the back of CPaaS and this rise in messaging technology, they're becoming something that's even more essential to all businesses and CPAS is slowly starting to, mer to morph in a way into this into CSAS, which uh, I know Jarvis, if he were here, would be, be holding his head in his hands at yet another ASS acronym, but CCAAS, contact centers as a service are a thing. And uh, again, our friends at Juniper in a separate bit of research um, reckon that they are, are already worth about $4.9 billion dollars uh globally are uh, uh, set for phenomenal growth of uh, like like 200 odd percent uh over the coming years as businesses think we need more than just multi-messaging platforms we need to be able to manage that 
and offer it as a coherent service that involves people and chatbots and video and all the different messaging platforms and voice uh, and voice over all the different ways of doing it, not just through like the sort of telephone network. So this market is also really growing off the back of this whole blob of messaging that's now becoming sort of central really to how all brands interact with their consumers and most importantly, how consumers interact with them. Now, that's the sort of latest in the messaging world from this week. I'm going to take a slight detour into payments because that's also seeing similar uh, sort of metamorphosis into to sort of something much more different to how it started out, akin to messaging, I think. Um, we're seeing the rise of uh, real-time immediate payments uh which is is sort of driving everything from how people pay each other to how they pay their bills to how they pay e-commerce uh, and a study by fact mr uh sees the demand for this globally growing phenomenally uh the 33 percent and annual sort of growth to be worth sort of in the in the region of around sort of 277 300 billion dollars within a decade so by 2032 which sounds like it should be miles away, but actually it's not that far off, really. Um, or as the old joke goes, only another seven Tory prime ministers between now and 2032. Um, that'll be funny for anybody who is in the UK. Um, but the market for real-time payments is growing phenomenally globally, and it's being driven primarily by uh, super apps, which are these apps that incorporate everything from social media to e-commerce to uh, restaurant booking to shopping to paying all in one tool and these are becoming much more important in the um, sort of way consumers shop now stepping back a bit this also brings in what we've just been talking about about messaging that the super apps aren't just there as a payment tool they're not just there as a shopping tool they're not just there as a social tool they're also there as a messaging tool and they bring all these things together and I think one of the things that, that's sort of often overlooked in terms of the growth of things like SMS and RCS and OTT messaging is its role within the super app market and how that ties up with payments because the whole sort of nadir of this is is really sort of getting the ability to get the message out there about something engage people in in discussion and chat about it with with the brand itself and with other consumers and their friends and the sharing and all that and then ultimately leading to them able to click and buy and pay and that is a boon as we've seen for things like carrier billing but i think it's also going to start to drive all the alternative um forms of payment so it's not just going to be about carrier billing and the role that plays carrier billing is going to be just one part of this alt payments world where we're going to see different ways of paying for stuff often through apps or messaging apps or super apps or even banking apps all those sorts of things we're going to see more and more of that sort of thing happening this sort of super app world as well is also driving money transfer transactions so people are moving money abroad they're paying for these overseas they're paying each other for stuff it's all part of the sharing social messaging engaged sort of amorphous blob of services which we're seeing across the world uh interestingly another survey uh that was out over the summer from safe betting sites finds that global download of apps uh, the growth in the number of apps being uh, downloaded by people is in fact slowing down. It's only going to set to grow by about 6% this year. However, within this, a lot of the apps that are being downloaded are ones that are these super apps that do multiple things, often bringing a whole load of stuff together into one uh, service. And I think while that naturally leads to a lower number of apps overall, because one app does 10 things, that's going to change how consumers operate i think the, the implications of this are really far reaching they stretch not just into payments and messaging as we've just talked about but they totally change how the whole of kind of e-commerce works and and to some degree within that paid for entertainment and media and all those things all these things are starting to be governed by how 
consumers use one app to consume, to purchase, to subscribe, to watch, to share, to, to ask questions of the vendors. And I think it, it's the beginnings of a really sort of changing model of how consumer digital behavior is going to be. Now, I talk a lot in previous podcasts and probably no doubt in many to come about the metaverse. I think the metaverse is going to be significant because I think it fundamentally is going to be a different way of accessing the internet. I think this super apps paradigm is really the start of that. It's not necessarily going to be about virtual reality and, and living in a, in a virtual world. It's about this world where you go to a place, be it just a screen and an app, but it, it gives you everything. It's where your friends are. It's where the brands and companies you deal with are. It's where the things you want to buy are. It's where conceivably people will swap and sell things as well, because I think there's going to be a, a groundswell, particularly as the sort of economy globally tanks of people, not necessarily just buying stuff, but also sharing, swapping, exchanging and selling goods. And I think that's going to be be followed in as well so i think with world telemedia uh a month and a bit away uh and uh, my esteemed colleague out in marbella uh choosing the carpet for the exhibition room and uh, assessing where the sort of lighting and lovely stands are going to go um i think as well we're going to be spending a lot of time working on how we look at all the different strands that go into the conference side of world telemedia and how while each is a great individual sort of silo of, of um, talent and information and technology, the overarching view really should be how does this all mesh together and how are we going to exploit this world of super apps and um, super engagement and super messaging and super payments. So uh, not bad, I don't think, for uh, the first uh, podcast back after our summer break. I've clearly had way too much time sitting on uh, various beaches cogitating and thinking this through but I think uh, it's an interesting I think talking point to to kick things off be interested very much to hear what you all think Uh, so do get in touch uh, and tell me how wrong I am or how right I might be or 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 some of the other ideas I haven't even considered there's obviously a a lot going on it's a very complicated uh, market and complicated world but that's some of the highlights from uh, the past few weeks um Many more to come. We'll be back uh, in a couple of weeks with uh, hopefully joined by Jarvis as well to discuss all the latest developments that have happened through the rest of the month. But uh, aside from that, thank you very much for joining us on this whistle stop first of the uh, second half of the year uh, podcast. I hope uh, we've um, given you some ideas, tickled your fancy and started to get you back in the mood for uh, the coming months uh, ahead uh, with some of the great things that are happening in the telemedia sector. So Over and out from me for now. So take care of yourselves and see you soon. Goodbye.